Oh boy. What's up everyone? So I don't have a big plan for today, but I'm like a little crunch for time and I wanna make sure that I get a really high quality uh, day of training in. So I went for a short run and did a few minutes of core work. And now in order to let myself have time to take the dogs out after I go for a ride, I'm gonna hop on the trainer and see what I can do in a hard effort up Alp de Zwift, which is the Zwift version of Alp Duez. And I thought it could be fun. I think it could be a good challenge. I really love that kind of effort. And 100% this is not an ideal day for doing that because I like had a pretty good Monday. I did a hard workout that was like kind of aerobic capacity type bike work. And then on Tuesday I did a mile and then two by 800 uh, meters on the track. Since I did a few miles of easy running and just did a little bit of core work, I'm pretty warmed up. So I'll hop on the trainer, get going, and pretty much just hit it hard from the bottom and we'll see how it goes. I haven't done like a hard full gas kind of long threshold effort like that in a while. I don't know if I would consider today a full gas effort, but we'll see. It depends on uh, just how I'm feeling and we'll see what I can do. So that was a really hard effort. I'm pretty blown, but that was great. It's possible that my power meter is a little bit improperly cal calibrated. I recently calibrated it, so it should be pretty good, just like a few rides ago. But, you know, I can always go back and do the same kind of effort again to see how it is. It was a good effort, and I know from my heart rate and effort level that it was, you know, about as good as I could manage. And I'm happy that my heart rate was pretty responsive and it got up there when I was doing the effort. It's always like pleasing to know that that's the case because it usually means that you're fresh enough that you can, you know, do a decent effort. Sometimes when your power is there, but your heart rate is low, that's a sign that you're a little fatigued and your nervous system is just not as responsive. So it can be fine to still do training at that time, but you don't wanna um, push it too much when that's the case. Or if you can't get the power going, then you should probably just call it and think about doing the workout another day and get some more rest before you try to go for it. Uh, today, you know, I was just kind of doing something for fun because uh, it's exciting to, I don't know, just do, do hard efforts, but I'll need to recover. And, you know, I think it's great to be intentional about your training 90% of the time, but if you're doing that 90% of the time, if you miss a few days because of the holidays or you go hard because you just like really feel like it and you're feeling good, sometimes that's okay. And it's good to have fun so you can keep going and keep your training good. Um, whereas like just, you know, blindly following a training plan to the letter, it can, for some people, be, you know, a way to thrive. For some people that like saps a little bit of the spontaneity out of your training. So anyway, I'm gonna go shower and take the dogs out for a little play because they need exercise too. And I'll come back again later. Okay, so that was pretty fun and very hard. I love uh, pushing and testing myself and, you know, it's not something that you want to do every week or uh, every workout, but it's fun to do sometimes. And just like, you know, doing group rides can be really motivating for a lot of people. For me, going, you know, pretty full gas on a extended climb or going after a pre R on a climb can be a really motivating thing sometimes. And, you know, in this particular case, I'm really pleased that my heart rate got up there and that I was able to put in a really good effort. Um, a lot of times that's a telltale sign for me that I'm like, you know, relatively fit and relatively fresh or like fresh enough to do a good effort if my heart rate can get up there pretty high. Because, you know, obviously if you're not super fit, you might not be able to totally exhaust your cardiac output and your capacity to like demand blood for um, a length of time like that. So if I'm like pretty fit, but not totally fit, I might not be able to maintain a heart rate above like 160, let's say for, you know, 30, 40 minutes on a hard climb. But if I'm in pretty good shape, I might be able to do like mid 160s, for example. My heart rate's pretty low compared to a lot of people, but you know, you, you get the idea. And then um, also, what do you call it? Uh, the fact that it, my heart was responsive and that it wasn't like, you know, inhibited from rising a good bit 
is a good sign that even though I was a little bit tired from previous workouts, I was able to execute and do a pretty good effort today. And you know, it was largely for fun. Again, like I'm trying to have fun right now and be very, um, not aggressive with my training, but I'm trying to get good training in, but I'm trying to set myself up for better training over the coming months. And right now while I'm time constrained, I'm trying to, you know, be very consistent and get some intensity in, but also just have fun with it and sometimes get in some longer sessions, but I'm not like stressing out too much about it. Cause I know that if, um, I like set aside more time in the near future to do a little bit higher volume, my fitness will come around just like it always does. And again, like if you're doing it pretty well, 90% of the time, um, you'll be setting yourself up for long-term success. But in any case, um, I don't know. There's a ton of fun. I was a little bit annoyed that I'm not absolutely certain that the power meter was accurately calibrated. So I feel like I've kind of set myself up to have to do the same effort again. And I think that I might go and try to um, mess around doing like some 20 minute peak power tests once or twice, some longer like 30, 40, 50 minute peak power tests, like doing maybe Alpha Zwift again pretty full gas to like use that as a power test and then maybe doing like a three by 20 workout again and just using all of those as you know good workouts but also as a way to kind of um compare those different methods for getting a handle on your ftp oh and then also like of course a ramp test i might do that a couple of times because i think i don't know it could be fun it's just like challenging to like do these stupid things and like i don't know bleed out of your eyeballs going hard but i find it really interesting that this one particular tool, i.e. the 20 minute peak power test has become so ubiquitous and so standardized when in fact, I think there are better methods out there. And I, you know, I think that it's a useful tool, but there are other methods that I like better. And in general, like I said, going full gas for 20 minutes, like once a month during the winter time, doesn't really make much sense to me, especially when your FTP is going to be changing pretty regularly, like pretty consistently over the course of the winter. If you're, if you are actually coming off of a decent break and you're like building up fitness throughout the winter to get ready for the spring. And, you know, again, like full gas efforts are great for getting ready for peak fitness, but you could do, you know, very hard workouts that are more productive and also get a good handle on your fitness without doing 20 minute efforts. Like you could do, you know, three by 20 or four by 20 or a four by 15, or you could do, you know, a 30, 40, 50 minute climb at like 98% effort where you know you're going very hard, but you're not totally gassing it and you have like just a little bit left in reserve. And like any of those would be very, very predictive of what your one hour peak power is, which in principle is theoretically what your FTP is supposed to be measuring. Um, but in fact, there's usually a lot of variance from individual athletes when you're going uh, and extrapolating whatever your 20 minute peak power is and projecting what your 60 minute peak power is. So anyway, that's just me being nerdy. You know, I'll probably post more of these, maybe post comparison, little, little video, but I love stuff like this. Um, let me know what kind of things you would be interested in hearing about from me. Thanks for watching if you got this far and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.